I'm Josh with Nutanix. And I'm Mark Nanayer with Nutanix as well. Welcome to Fears with Engineers BYOB edition. I brought my City of Trees Idaho Pale Ale by Woodland Empire. So I was trying to keep it local today. Um, what I like about pale ales in general is that they're not that hoppy. Hoppy's not my favorite, so I tend to go with these. I have one of my Belgian favorites, Leffe, which is a, a blonde ale. Um, nice drinking beer. Um, can find it pretty easily nowadays in the U.S., but it's, it's a good one. I'm a malty. I've just barely come out of porters. I go for uh, porters. Um, are my all winter beer and then um, you know I'm pale ales and my absolute favorite beer right now I don't have any of because I drink it all um, but it's like a Vienna style lager so got it yeah whereas I'm very hoppy at the moment it's definitely IPA um, the Dutch style of pilsners that we drank when we were in college and so on are definitely more on the hoppy side as well um, I do love, love a good Belgian so that's definitely more, more malty and more full bodied. My, my favorite Belgian is the West Mala Triple. That, that's, that's absolutely gorgeous. Loaded question and a loaded answer, I would say. Um, I think RF2 makes sense for a lot of applications, um, a lot of deployments, and so on. Of course, at some level, you need to switch to RF3 to make sure that the chance of having multiple hardware failures basically doesn't bring your cluster down and make data unavailable. Um, but beyond that, it, it really comes down to uh, where are my snapshots, am I using replication, am I using VR, am I using leap, am I using backup, right? So the, the, the answer is probably much, much broader than just RF2 or RF3, is what is your entire data protection um, strategy, right? So you can sustain not only um, field nodes or field drives, you can sustain uh, rack failures or cluster failures or even data center failures and basically be able to uh, to fail over wherever you need to, wherever you want to, and restart those applications and resume the business as soon as possible. Josh, what's your view there? My, I, I'm typically an RF2 guy, but no, you're correct on the, I mean, the, the reasoning I use on RF2 is very similar to the reasoning you just had there, right? If we've got protection domains, I mean, I think every one of my customers is using protection domains in some some form, right, of some local snapshot, even if they're using a third party backup system. I'm like, well, then let's snap it every six hours and keep five of them just so we've got as an emergency. Once again, I'm missing West Coast over here. I think um, West Coast is definitely has developed their own style. But out of these three, um, that's hard. It's hard to choose. There are so many good restaurants and so on. I actually did a interview the other day with uh, with Aaron Franklin. I don't know if you saw that uh, for the experience event. That was really fun. Um, out of these three, probably Kansas. Hmm. Well, I mean, I think Kansas is kind of the middle ground. I mean, North Carolina is its own leading problem, right? Because there's Eastern North Carolina and then Western North Carolina, right? Eastern North Carolina is not Lexington, and it goes further than the chopped versus the sliced. What I like about Texas is that sauce is on the side and then you can adjust and build yep. it your own way. Nutanix Mine, it's been uh, my, my project for the last little bit over two years now. Nutanix Mine, if you don't know, um, it's uh, basically uh, taking what we've built for, for primary infrastructure, right? AOS, AHV, all of that goodness, Prism. And we're extending that into data protection right now. So AOS, backup vendor, all integrated from a management perspective, from a data path perspective, um, from an installation, from a support, from a scaling perspective. Um, so really extending what we do for primary into secondary storage, into data protection side of the house. Excellent. Uh, my only note, uh, or my, my question for people who are watching, is you want to get involved with, if you're not a member of an expert team, Mm -hmm. And if you're not really participating in an expert team, you really, you really should get involved, right? Yes. A lot of us talk field SEs and, and SREs and other people will be like, well, if they did this in the product, it would make our life a lot easier, right? Those expert teams are your conduits to PM. So, I mean, if you want to influence the way the products go, that's a great way to be involved and attend those meetings and speak up at them. Definitely would recommend um, attending those sessions, being part of it, being an active uh, participant.